Testing, testing, testing. Everybody hear me out there. Everybody hear me. Let me know if you can hear me over in the chat box. Testing. Make sure all of my stuff is right. I see a yep. I see a yes. I see a yup. I see a good. I see a hear you well. I feel like that's probably good enough. And ladies and gentlemen, happy Friday and welcome to a random last minute scheduled live stream Q&A. So I was supposed to put out a video, well, I was supposed to put out a video yesterday and I had a ton of problem with my editing software and then I planned on putting it out today and yet again, uh, the software failed me. So I gotta figure out exactly how to fix that and hopefully uh, that video will be out next week. Let me, uh, let me get adjusted here and get all my stuff. Um, so yeah, so I recently went and did a three day, two night trip in West Clear Creek Wilderness here in Arizona. It's about an hour and a half, about an hour and a half south of Flagstaff. So pretty close to here. Um, and I had shot in a bunch of amazing footage and I was gonna put together this really killer trip video for you guys. Really kind of the first random backpacking trip video that I've done in a long time. You know, usually I do videos of my long distance hikes, my through hikes. So this was really gonna be like the first time getting back to my roots and just doing a small video on a quick overnight weekend trip. And I updated my OS on my MacBook Pro. And for some reason that screwed with my editing software. And the whole time I was trying to edit all this awesome, gorgeous footage of these amazing, beautiful canyons uh, down in West Clear Creek, it kept crashing. So, but hopefully this doesn't leave you guys empty handed for the week. Plus it's been kind of a while since I've done a Q and A and it's been a while since I've done a live stream. And when I was doing those live streams, I was doing them on Tuesdays at like 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and I had a ton of people telling me that they wish that I did it later in the day because they weren't off work yet. So hopefully a bunch of you guys will be able to make it to this even though it was late, last minute. Um, <laughs> and I totally just kind of sprung it on everybody. Hopefully everybody that missed those live streams is able to make it tonight if you guys don't have too much going on. But regardless, I appreciate you all coming to hang out with me for the night. Hopefully everybody is doing really well. Um, somebody said, I'm tired of your excuses. <laughs> Right on. Well, yeah, I'm tired of my excuses too, but that's okay because I can do what I want on my live stream and my channel. So uh, I'll just keep making excuses. You'll just have to deal with them. So anyways, um, let me see. Somebody says out of sync audio. Has everybody got okay audio? Maybe refresh your, refresh your feed. I think I see a couple people saying that they don't have a good audio connection, but on my end, everything is looking great. So you guys should be pretty good too. Um, let's see, somebody said, do you like beer? Well, yeah, I like beer. Of course I like beer. Um, somebody said, audio is good. All right, okay, here, right on. Audio is good for me. Um, sweet. Uh, real quick, somebody said, would you happen to ever hike to Havasu Falls? I've not done that hike yet. Uh, it's really hard to get permits to hike to Havasu Falls. Plus, I think Havasu Falls is one of those places that is super, super overcrowded and it probably doesn't need my attendance there right now. It gets a lot of visitors every year. Um, I'd like to do it, but just haven't done it yet. So I have a handful of random questions that I've been getting a lot of kind of since this whole pandemic thing happened, since we've been in lockdown, since I've been back in Arizona, since I couldn't go to Peru, since I couldn't go do the Great Divide Trail. So I figured I would answer a handful of random big questions that I've been getting a lot from people. And in between those questions, I will basically jump over here into the chat box and answer basically anybody's question. Um, as many questions as possible. I'm gonna to try to go for about an hour, an hour and a half. When I was doing those live casts where I had guests and I was interviewing them, I was getting up to like two and a half, three hours. 
I just don't have that in me for a Friday night. Plus, I'm sure you guys probably have something better to do than just to sit here and listen to me talk all night. So I'm going to try to keep it to about an hour and a half. So one of the first big questions that I've been getting a lot of lately is, um, what is my next hike? You know, I was supposed to be obviously on the AT for two months and I was supposed to hop off the AT, go to Peru for about two weeks to shoot a short film, get back. And then, well, right about now, I should have been flying out, or really soon, I should have been flying out to go to Canada to start the Great Divide Trail. Well, obviously, because of the whole pandemic and everything else that's going on, uh, the borders are still closed, um, for what I know. Or, on top of that, it's really hard to get all the permits that you need to hike the Great Divide Trail, so that is kind of off the plate. So the plan was to wait until August, and if for some reason, magically, everything opens back up and they're issuing permits, I still would rather go do the Great Divide Trail more than any other hike right now in August, but it's, it, it, it doesn't, look, doesn't look very promising. So the next plan was to do the Colorado Trail. And that's the question that I've also been getting a lot of is, am I gonna go do the Colorado Trail? Am I still planning to do the Colorado Trail? Um, I really wanna do the Colorado Trail, I really do. But it also seems like everybody else really wants to do the Colorado Trail this year. So I'm not saying no, but with how it's looking, with you know numbers rising again, especially here in Arizona, um, it's not looking very good for us here in Arizona. I think we're probably gonna get another like little lockdown. They just issued something today telling everybody that they had to wear a mask no matter where they went. Um, and I think it enforces tomorrow, it, like it starts tomorrow. I don't know how long that's supposed to last. But with all that being said, as many people that are gonna be out on the Colorado Trail, and the Colorado Trail's still going through a lot of little mountain towns like Leadville, like Durango, um, little towns that can be heavily impacted by something like a virus. I just don't know with that many people being on the trail if it's a smart decision. Um, that being said, I'm not 100% giving up on the Colorado Trail. I would still really love to do it. But right now I'm actually planning on two other hikes, two other bigger hikes, through hikes as it were. So right now I really have my eyes set on the, the Uinta Highline Trail up in Utah. So it's just outside of Salt Lake City in the Uinta Mountains. It's about 104 miles. So it would take probably about five days, six days if we really wanted to stretch it out. Um, and that's really what I'm looking at right now. And probably thinking the end of July, beginning of August, because it would only take a handful of days. So even if I was gonna go do the Colorado Trail, the Uinta would still be a quick trail that I could kind of knock out real quick. And it's one that I wanted to do. It's a super beautiful trail. I've heard tons of great things about it. Um, and I've never really done any type of long distance hiking, really any type of hiking in Utah. So that seems like it would be a really great option for me. Aside from that, I'm also thinking about the Tahoe Rim Trail. I got a buddy named Einstein who has done it in the past and obviously being on the PCT, I have done a bunch of it and it's 170 miles. It seems pretty quick to knock out. So that is another thing that I'm thinking out, uh, thinking about possibly for August. And that would prob probably be like mid August um, to late August. And that is if I do not do the Colorado Trail. Aside from that, I have been planning a bunch of smaller trips around uh, Arizona. So like I said, I just got back from West Clear Creek Wilderness, spent two nights, three days in that canyon, kind of exploring around. And there are so many canyons and different creeks and different wildernesses here in Arizona that are basically in my backyard. So I think that I'm gonna start doing a lot of smaller trips and tonight, I have a handful of new pieces of gear that I've been basically playing with on some of those hikes and some of the stuff that I'm gonna be using going forward with some of the other trips that I have planned this year. So that's basically kind of what I have planned for the next handful of months. Colorado Trail, if it doesn't seem like it's gonna be hard to get out there and it doesn't seem like it's gonna to be too overcrowded, and obviously with the whole virus thing, hopefully that doesn't 
knock it out like it's knocked my other hikes out. Um, the Uinta Highline Trail, because that seems like a really easy hike to just go out and do real quick. I won't have to go into any towns and resupply. I can carry all of my food for the entire hike. So that's a plus because I won't have to worry about hopping from town to town. And then possibly the Tahoe Rim Trail. Aside from that, I've been basically getting out almost every single weekend to do at least an overnight, if not two nights, somewhere in the Arizona backcountry. So you can expect to see a lot of that on the channel. All right, so um, let's see if I have any random questions to answer real quick. I want to kind of go back through the chat. There's so many questions. There's about 362 of you guys um, hanging out. Welcome. Thanks for joining me. Uh, for everybody that's just now joining or was joining whenever I was jabbing my jaw, um, what I said earlier was, uh, you know, I was supposed to put out a video this week, yesterday, today, and just struggled super hard with my editing software. Sometimes you're just at the mercy of technology. Um, you know, I don't have an editor that edits my videos, so I went out and hiked that trail on, see, we, we started on Sunday, so Sunday, Monday, we got back on Tuesday evening, and then basically I started editing to put it out on Thursday. Um, so I hiked it, I shot it, and I edited it. And yeah, technology just wasn't my friend this week. So that's why it did not happen. Um, here's a question. Do you think people will be able to through hike next year? Uh, yeah, I think so. I think that the whole through hiking culture is definitely gonna change. I think how people hike, where people hike. Um, I think a lot of the trail associations will probably put together some certain regulations and stuff. Um, to try to keep maybe crowd sizes smaller, um, hiker trash crowd sizes smaller, I guess you should say. But yeah, I think that people will definitely be able to get out and through hike. I just think that right now it's just, everything's still so uncertain, right? Like everything is kind of clearing up and things are starting to opening up, but then things kind of spike and get weird again, like here in Arizona and things start shutting down again. So I think by next year, I almost feel like, and this sounds weird, it'll be a new normal, right? Like this whole virus thing and whatever virus is next uh, will be some sort of new normal and we'll just have to learn how to adjust to it. And I think people will still through hike. I just think that we'll have to do it in a certain different way, I guess. Um, let's see, somebody said I got my outdoor evolution hat this week, sweet. Um, so if any of you didn't know, uh, Outdoor Evolution, uh, my media company actually did a fundraiser um, to promote diversity in the outdoors. And we, I had a random run of these hats that were kind of off. So some of them had kind of the stitching was off. This patch was kind of like cocked to the side a little bit. And we basically took all of those hats and every sticker, um, all the stickers that we sell, all the Outdoor Evolution stickers over in the shop, we took all of those and all of the profits for an entire week. We donated 100% to Outdoor Afro which is an awesome organization that helps promote diversity in the outdoors. So uh, we were able to do that. So anybody that ordered a sticker and a hat, thank you so much for ordering that. Thank you so much for um, donating to a good cause. And we were super happy to do that. And I'm glad that everybody has got their sweet Outdoor Evolution merch. For everybody that's going to ask, um, we do have some more hats coming very soon. I'm trying to figure out how to get some more made. It has been a nightmare to get some more of these made, but they are coming, just keep checking over on OutdoorEvolution.com in the shop and I'm sure on Instagram and here on YouTube and stuff, I'll, uh, I'll definitely talk about it when, whenever they're gonna be coming out. Um, let's see, uh, somebody said giveaway update. Uh, yeah, so I did a giveaway last week. I gave away a sleeping pad, I gave away a pack and a tent. I posted that over on the community tab. All you gotta do is go to my channel and go over to the community tab and click that. I posted all three winners over there. If you're one of the winners, or if you entered, if you left a comment, make sure you go over there and check on the community tab and see if I announced your name. Um, if I did announce your name, all you gotta do is give me your email address. I'll send you an email and I will get that stuff out to you. But congrats to all the winners. I don't have them offhand right now. I would totally um, read them to you. Oh, actually, I do have them right now. Uh, so the winner of the sleeping pad was Jeff Dodd. The winner of the 38 liter uh, 3FUL pack was Paul Burns. 
and the winner of the tent was Cynthia Berry. So if you are one of those people, um, if that's your name, go over to the community tab, check it, make sure that that is your comment that you left. Uh, Cause I'm sure there's more than one Jeff Dodd. I'm sure there's more than one Paul Burns. So <laughs> go over there and check and see if that is your comment. If it is, leave me your email address and I'll get that to you. Um, thanks everybody for playing. Let's see, let's see, usual crowded. Um, someone says, Elizabeth Miller says, how do you prepare physically to do a through hike? Um, you know, I just personally try to keep my cardio in check. Um, for me, it's really cardio. And then, you know, shoulder strength a little bit. I do carry a frameless pack um, and a pack without a hip belt. So whenever I go do through hike, or I'm sorry, when I go do day hikes, um, or even small weekend trips, I will carry basically what I carry on a through hike. So if I just go out for a quick hike, if I go out to hike two or three miles, this is no joke, I will put my full pack on. I'll put, um, you know, the pack that I typically through hike in with my sleep system, my tent, and my cook system, and basically everything. And sometimes I'll even throw in a couple days of food and a liter of water. And that's just kind of how I keep my body used to having that weight on me. And aside from that, I just kind of keep my cardio up. I ride a bike a lot, uh, I do some trail running, and then I just get out and hike. Honestly, that's the best way to physically prepare for a through hike is just get out and hike. Go on shakedown hikes, do day hikes, do uh, weekend backpacking trips. Just keep your body in shape physically and mentally. I mean, get out, if it's wet, if it's raining, if it's cold, if it's hot, get out and backpack for the weekend. If you got nothing else to do, it's a Saturday and it's pouring rain outside, get all your stuff, go out to your local trail and get out and go on a backpacking trip. Learn how to set your tent up in the rain. Uh, learn how to cook in your vestibule if you have to. Um, learn how to hang a bear bag. Go out and just hike. It's the best way to train for a through hike. Let's see. Greg Daly says, will you do another Ironman? No, probably not. Um, my triathlon racing days are long over. Uh, I do a little bit of trail running, but my knees can't really handle um, like heavy impact road running anymore. Just all those years of running and I've had like a, a couple knee surgeries on my right knee because I've torn my meniscus so many times. Um, I just, my knees can't really handle it. So no, probably not. Um, let's see. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Ooh, somebody says backpack burls says getting ready for the Penhody. Any advice? Um, yeah, have a great hike. That trail is so amazing. It's so amazing. Um, it's been a while. It was like 2018 when I hiked it. So advice, the trail has changed quite a bit. They have um they have rerouted some stuff out there the trail has definitely grown a little bit in popularity and now there's a gut hook guide for it and there's actually information out there when i went to go hike it there was like no information on that trail i basically just had to go out there blind i had one guy's trip report that i kind of just saved on my phone and i would just read his notes um, and even that stuff was wrong because it was outdated so really um yeah just get the gut hook guide do a little bit of research you know, check out some other people's videos of the trail um, and just have a great time. That's such, such a good hike. And anybody that wants to get out for a quick through hike, if you're in that area, Alabama, Georgia, even North Carolina, Tennessee, uh, the Penhody Trail is an amazing small through hike. Really great, challenging, and beautiful. Um, let's see. Somebody said, do the Great Western Trail. Maybe one day, um, not right now. <laughs> uh, somebody said, will you do a gear list before you do the Colorado Trail? Yeah, um, if I go do the Colorado Trail, if I go do the Uinta Highline Trail or the Tahoe Rim Trail, I will probably do a quick gear list because the gear list that I kind of set out for all year has definitely changed because I had planned on having kind of an all season or an early season through hiking kit, right? So I was going out in March on the AT and I wanted to make sure that the gear that I had was gonna work for March, April, May in Peru, um, July and August. So I will be switching a few things out. Uh, mm -hmm. One of those things I wanna talk about tonight 
Um, maybe a couple things I might be switching out. But yes, I will do a gear list if I go do one of those hikes, I promise. Let's see. Nerdy Gearhead Zach says, why don't you use a bladder? Uh, if you're talking about a like a camelback with a hose, I just think they're kind of silly on a through hike. I've always just carried a like two one liter um, disposable bottles, like a smart water bottle or a life water bottle or one of those. I like them because they're easy to use. It, it takes no time to reach back, grab a bottle, take a drink, put it back. Having that hose and stuff, I just think it's overkill. Um, I know those things that have broke on people. Plus the packs I use don't have like a little bladder sleeve that you can put that in, so I've never used that. I will every once in a while use a knock Vecto bladder. Uh, it's like a two liter bladder that has a big wide mouth on there that a filter threads onto. I used to use the Sawyer one and now I use the Katadyne B free one. And if I'm gonna go out and hike a really dry section of trail, like a couple weeks ago, I went out and hiked a section of, um, I guess it wasn't a section of the Arizona Trail. It was kind of close to the Arizona Trail, just north of Flagstaff. It was a super dry section, so I did carry my two liter bladder plus a one liter smart water bottle and that was enough for me. But as far as the one with the hose, I just think it's overkill. Anybody that I know that's ever used one on a through hike ends up getting rid of them. You see a ton of them in hiker boxes. So I probably wouldn't suggest using one because just a water bottle works, works fine enough. Um, let's see. Uh, Has anybody done a super chat? I don't think so. There's a lot of questions in here. How are the recent forest fires? Hmm, somebody said, uh, we ain't dead yet. Ask, how are the recent forest fires affecting the Arizona Trail? Pretty rough. Uh, there are a lot of fires going on right now. There's a fire, a massive fire in the Catalinas right now. There is a big fire um, in the superstitions right now, and the Arizona Trail cuts through both of those. And honestly, those are two of the most beautiful sections of the trail. So it's not looking good for the AZT. Um, you know, people that are planning to do a southbound with how those fires are burning right now, I don't know how reroutes would work. Arizona right now is, because of the whole virus thing, things are starting to uh, spike again. And I honestly, with all that going on, I think that they're probably gonna put in another stay at home order. Honestly, like within the next couple of weeks, if I had to take a guess, I hope not. I hope that's not true, but it kind of seems like it might happen. But if they do that, you know, th them being able to get out and do reroutes for the Arizona trail is probably gonna be the least of the trail association's um, worries. So somebody planning on coming out here in October, I mean, that's still a lot of time until October, but it's probably gonna be pretty rough because those are two big sections of trail that are probably gonna be pretty hard to kind of go around. So um, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know. It's, the fires are definitely affecting it pretty hard. Um, oh, just got a super chat from Global Adventure. Thank you, thank you so much. I really appreciate that, Global Adventure. You didn't even have a question. Um, so usually when somebody does a super chat, if you have a, a question that I'm just not answering and that I'm not going through, um, definitely leave a question. So if you have a question for me, um, I'll try to catch that in the chat. But thank you so much for the super chat. I appreciate it. Uh, let's see what else we have. Um, somebody said... Um... Oh, that took me down to the bottom of the list. Let me. You guys get to awkwardly stare at me, awkwardly staring at my computer screen, which is so fun. Um, um, there is a lot of questions that I've answered a bunch of times before. So if I'm not answering a question, I've probably answered it before in another Q&A. Um, 
to the person that keeps asking the same question over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. Um, how did Plug It In get his name? Uh, he owns an electric company called Plug It In. That's it. <laughs> go ask Plug It In. Um, he's got a YouTube channel too and a great Instagram. Uh, so go follow Plug It In if not already. Is it that is that that important? So he said it. This is of most importance. Um, I don't know if it's that important. I think there's a lot more important things in the world than how that man got his trail name. But yeah, as far as I know, um, he owns a electric service called Plug It In. <laughs> Somebody said Dan Durston gear thoughts. Uh, I think the tent that Dan Durston made the I think it's the X Mid. Sorry if I'm saying that wrong. Looks really interesting to me. I'm not a big fan of cell nylon tents, but that tent has definitely perked my interest. So that might be something I want to check out in the future. I don't know if Dan has any plans on doing a DCF version of that, but that would be really, really nice. I'm going to be looking into a bunch of new shelters here soon. So, um, oh, here's a super chat. <laughs> Scott said, hashtag... <laughs> I don't know if I can say that on here. Um, cheese dick army. Yeah, yeah. I'm a cheese dick. So I wear that with pride. <laughs> Appreciate that, Scott. Thank you for the super chat, bud. Um, oh, some Nick said, uh, have you seen the documentary on National Geographic about the hikers who hiked the whole Grand Canyon? Yeah, that's Pete McBride. Pete McBride is actually a phenomenal National Geographic photographer. I've been a fan of his for years, and that is a really good documentary. That documentary really shows you how it doesn't take super expensive cameras and big production equipment to tell a very good story, because they shot a lot of that with just small DSLR cameras and GoPros, and that documentary is phenomenal. If anybody hasn't seen that, I think it's on Disney+. Plus. Um, Go check it out. It's called Into the Grand Canyon. It's phenomenal. Uh, oh, super chat from Elizabeth Johnson said, have you ever been on the, I always say this wrong, um, uh, Ochita? Is it the Ochita? I'm totally saying that wrong. Uh, National Recreation Trail. I have not. I have not. I've been very close to it, and I thought about getting out there and checking it out, maybe doing a section, but I have not been on it. Uh, it is on my list, though, and I will check it out. I uh, probably need to learn how to pronounce it first, though. So <laughs> thank you for the super chat, Elizabeth. I appreciate you. Um, let's see. Let's see. Um, all right. I'm going to tackle one of the other main questions that this video was kind of based around. This whole Q&A was based around, and that is new gear. Um, so I have recently been playing with some new gear. For a while I was kind of stuck on what I was using, but because this year I'm going to be doing, oh, hold on, got another super chat. Um, Don Walker, thank you so much. Don asks, some people have resumed their AT through hikes. Do you think it is too soon or can they hike safe now? I don't know. Um, I probably think it's a little too soon. Um, I haven't really heard the ATC making any type of an announcement, um, being okay with people coming back on trail or suggesting if people should continue to postpone their hike. Um, so I, you know, I always follow, for me, I have a lot of respect for public lands and a lot of respect for the associations and, um, and the agencies that take care of public lands. So if the ATC is telling me to not be on the trail, I'm not going to be on it. Um, that's kind of my two cents, but uh, maybe a little bit too soon, honestly. Thanks, Don. I appreciate the super chat and another super chat from Jim. And if you haven't addressed it, what are your thoughts on the bus 142 being removed from Alaska? Yeah, I saw that. Um, so for anybody that doesn't know what we're talking about, Bus 142 was the famous bus that uh, Chris McCandless um, hiked out to and unfortunately passed away at. I think it's actually a good thing that they removed the bus because for years people have been going out to that, taking like pilgrimages to it and getting themselves in a lot of danger, people needing to be rescued all the time. There's people that have died trying to get to that bus. 
um, just because they saw a movie or because they read Krakauer's book. Uh, I personally read Krakauer's book and loved it. Wasn't as big a fan of a movie. I think they might've glorified him a little bit too much. And I think because of that, there are so many people that go out there that probably, it's not that they shouldn't go out there, they're, they're just not prepared to go out there. And I think it was a big um, thorn in uh, their side for a while, having to send out so many rescue crews and stuff. So I'm personally glad that they removed the bus. Um, and I got a super chat from David Smith. It says, love your channel and Instagram. Keep up the great work. Thank you, David. I appreciate it. Um, I try oh so hard. Um, so that's a lot of super chats. Oh, there's another one. Um, <laughs> what Hill said just thanks. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, so I'm going to start talking about gear real quick. And if there's more super chats that come in, I will answer them and I'll get back to answering some normal questions, but, uh, new gear. So because I am doing a bunch of new trips and one of the things that I wanted to talk about here in a second was a big trip that I'm actually planning for late in this year. And that is, uh, well, I'll get into it in a second. I'll show you some of the stuff that I'm planning on using on that trip. Plus some of these smaller trips, like I said, I'm gonna to try to get into a bunch of different canyoneering and small quick trips here in Arizona. And because of that, I've picked up some new gear. And one of the first new pieces of gear that I picked up, and I've gotten questions about it for years, and I've never had one, I've never personally used one, but hiking around in a lot of wilderness areas and in a lot of canyons, um, something like gut hook is just not there. Something like Gaia sometimes doesn't work. So I actually picked up a Garmin InReach Mini. Um, and I plan to start testing this out over the next handful of weeks because I am going out on a lot of those trips and because I will be going on a big trip, hopefully, hopefully in South America at the end of this year, um, I picked this up to test it and use it and just kind of get some of my thoughts with a GPS. I've never really owned a backpacking GPS. I've had a Garmin E-Trex 20 that I used to use when I started bikepacking and I haven't used that in years. Um, and aside from that, I just always use gut hook because I'm on an established trail. But now that I'm doing a bunch of uh, hiking on non-established trails, I picked this guy up. So I will be using this and I'll eventually let you guys know my thoughts on it, but pretty awesome. This thing weighs 3.5 ounces, a dead on, like that's what Garmin said it weighed and I put it on my scale. So hundred grams and it's killer. You can link it up with your phone. You can use it as SOS, which I plan on not doing hopefully. And um, yeah, it's just awesome, awesome little gadget. So I plan on using this over the next hand. So I got a bunch of super chats. I'm gonna answer those real quick. Um, William Gilman said, have you seen Free Solo on Nat Geo? If so, what were your thoughts? Yep, I saw Free Solo in the theaters and I loved it. I think Alex Honnold is an insanely crazy and super talented person. Um, <laughs> scared the hell out of me to watch the movie for the first time in theaters totally freaked me out because I have a little bit of a fear of heights, but amazing film. Uh, Jimmy Chin done a phenomenal job on that film. Uh, and before this other one goes away, uh, Jay Lisa McKnight says, no question, just wanted to show some support. You inspire my husband and I to get out and adventure more and we love your recommendations. Thank you so much. I'm glad that I can inspire you and glad that I can get you out on the trail and, and help you out. So thank you for the super chat. I appreciate it. And then the last super chat, which was a big one. Thank you, Wade. Um, Wade says, do you choose a frameless pack only to save weight or do you find at your typical weight a frame isn't necessary? That's a good question. So the reason I use frameless packs is for a couple different reasons. Number one is because frameless packs are more simple. I use the word simplistic a lot and people wanna attack me for that, which I don't know why. Um, <laughs> Frameless packs are just more simple, and at the end of the day, the last frame pack that I, the last framed pack that I had, was the Z Packs Arc Blast, and you, you know every time you're supposed to, every time you take it on or put it on, take it off or put it on, you're supposed to readjust the frame because it has an arcing frame in there, <clears throat> and it's just another step. And at the end of the day, I just want to put my stuff in a bag, I want to sling it over my shoulders, and I want to get to hiking. And at the end of the day, I want to take it off. I want to unpack it. So that's number one why I use frameless packs. They're just more simple. And the other reason is because once you go down to a more minimalistic, uh, minimal, minimal kit like what I use, 
Even though I'm full comfort, I do use a very small kit on my through hikes. You just don't need that much room. And when you're getting into the pack range of like 40 liters, 35 liters, 30 liters, which is really all I need, you know, the pack that I use is 35 liters, um, having a frame is kind of pointless. When you're carrying that low of a weight and that, I guess, uh, minimal of gear, having a full frame and a hip belt, a big padded hip belt and stuff is just kind of overkill. And you're not really using it until you really get some heavy weight in it. So that's why I personally don't use a pack with a frame anymore. And that's why I typically stick to frameless packs. Um, hopefully that helps. And thanks, Wade. I appreciate the super chat, bud. So I talked about the Garmin InReach Mini, which I do plan on using a lot of. And another piece of gear that I recently have been using a lot is not really new because I picked it up last year and I did a small video about it, but I only really got a chance to take it out on like one or two trips. Well, ever since I've been going out and doing a bunch of local trips, I've been using it a lot and I have really fallen in love with it way more than I did last year. And that is the Thermarest uh, Uberlight, the Neo Air Uberlight. So I've been using the X-Lite for years, the big yellow one, the long and wide one, the large, and it's my go-to pad. I picked this up last year. Like I said, I picked it up really late in the year, so I only got a little bit to use it. Well, now that I'm back in Arizona, I'm not in super cold temps, I've been using the heck out of this thing, and it's been phenomenal. I love this pad. Uh, it's, it's like a softer material, so it's actually more comfortable for me to sleep on at night. Plus, I sleep really hot, and sometimes the R value on the x light when I am, um, you know, when, I, when it's hotter outside, when it's warmer outside, I'm using something like a 20 degree quilt, it actually makes me sweat, and then in return makes me more cold. So I've been loving this thing a lot. I'm gonna be doing a lot of bike packing trips this fall and winter, which I'll get into here in a second. And I plan on using this just because it's a lot lighter. This thing on my scale only weighs 10.3 ounces. So you gotta love that. And it's super comfortable. It's wide enough for me. It's long enough for me. And I have not had a hole in it. I've had it out in the desert. I don't know why so many people keep popping these and having problems with them. I have not had a single problem with this pad leaking. Uh, and I've had it in all kinds of environments. So that is kind of new on my gear list and kind of an update of something that I've been using a lot lately. Take a break real quick and answer some more of these super chats. Older woman backpacking. Thank you so much for the super chat. No question though. Um, another super chat from, ah, <laughs> Hiker Royalty. I was actually gonna talk about you next because I received something today and I was gonna give that a shout out. Um, Hiker Royalty, thank you so much for the super chat. Hiker Royalty asks, tell me something that you've never told anyone else or just tell me how you're doing, how's life, everyone happy and healthy. Gotta love that guy. If you guys are not following Hiker Royalty over on Instagram, really funny meme account, but also just a great humanitarian. Um, it's been doing a lot of really great things for a lot of the hiking community, for um, Black Lives Matter, for a lot of things recently. Uh, big time hats off to a uh, Hiker Royalty for all the amazing stuff um, and being such an amazing part of the community, being a real leader in the hiking community. So thank you so much for that. Um, tell you something I've never told anyone else. First I'll answer, how am I doing? I'm doing great, doing great. Actually this last week uh, I had a little bit of food poisoning. Um, I don't know what I ate and where I got food poisoning, but I did have food poisoning. And if you've ever had food poisoning, you know how that goes. So uh, aside, now that I'm over it, I'm feeling great, feeling energetic and awesome. Happy that you're all here with me, hanging out. So um, life is great. And tell you something I've never told anyone else. Uh, I didn't have a vehicle, my first vehicle, till I was 19 years old. Oh, that's not really that great, but I've, <laughs> I've talked a lot about other things. I've owned a restaurant. Um, I owned a recording studio. I used to be a spinning instructor, you know, like indoor spinning, cycling. I was a certified indoor spinning instructor, spandex, the whole deal, microphone, yelling at people to you know, stand up, get down, stand up, get down, uh, faster, faster. Yeah, I did that professionally. Um, so there you go, there's something. Uh, yeah, that's all I got. Thanks a lot, Hacker Royalty, I appreciate it, bud. 
Um, and again, thanks for all the great things you're doing for the hiking community. Peace, love, and backpacking says, what is your average total pack weight, including food and water? Also, <laughs> order your version of EE quilt and it's over 400, is that right? Lastly, do you ever take off your hat? You just asked three questions. Um, I just took off my hat to take my hat off to hike royalty, so there you go on that. Um, over 400 bucks, yeah, I think the last time I ordered, I think when I ordered that quote, it was like right at 425 or something. It's because I went with 950, wide, long, 70 on the inner, 10D on the outer. That sounds about right, yeah. I'm sure prices have probably went up a little bit since early 2018, no, late 2017 when I bought that quilt. Um, but yeah, that sounds about right to me. And what is my average total pack weight, including food and water? Um, on the AT, when I went out to do the AT, the day that I started, I had three days food. So three days food, um, my base weight, my camera equipment, my fanny pack, and it would typically carry about a liter of water. I was right at 20 and a half pounds, maybe 21, maybe 21. But that's typically when I'm carrying about three to four days of food, I'm right there just over 20 pounds with my current setup. My base weight without camera equipment and stuff is just over nine pounds, but um, adding the camera equipment, my big heavy camera, which I'm using to shoot this right now, uh, my microphone, my GoPro, all of the extra camera stuff that I carry, um, usually right like just, just at 13 pounds, and then plus three, four days of food, one liter of water puts me right over 20 pounds. So thank you so much for the super chat. I really appreciate it. All right, um, I have, oh, so speaking of Hiker Royalty, another new piece of gear that I got is I wanted to show you guys this because it's really awesome. Um, Hiker Royalty and Light AF recently teamed up and made this custom Hiker Royalty fanny pack. Uh, they released these and they donated 100% of the proceeds to Black Lives Matter, which was amazing, absolutely amazing. Um, and that's what I was talking about, being such a great humanitarian. Just received mine today. We actually, here at Outdoor Evolution, we picked up four of these actually, um, and I will be giving some of these away. So, you know, as much as these are awesome, um, I wanted to get them and really give them away. So I will be doing a giveaway here coming up. I'll probably do one on Patreon. So I'll give one of these away on Patreon. I will probably give a couple of these away on Patreon. I'll give away one here on the channel somehow. Uh, keep an eye out for that but super awesome that they did these. It's a DCF fanny pack made by Light AF and got all that awesome custom um, here. Let's see if I can get that in focus. There we go, that's kind of in focus. Um, all this awesome custom print on it. It says Hiker Royalty, but uh, Hiker Royalty really is Hiker Royalty doing some amazing things in the community. So thanks a lot, bud, I really appreciate that. All right, let's see, got another super chat. Since you're doing shorter trips right now, would you consider running an experiment to see how minimal of a camera system you need to bring? What about minimal video editing on an iPhone slash iPad? Um, yeah, I mean, I've done that in the past. When I first started like hiking and shooting videos, I was doing everything with a little GoPro session. And then I did some stuff on my cell phone. Then I went from there to a pocket camera, the G7X Mark II, and then I went to the M50. So I've done that in the past. I've went super, super minimal and I could do that. But for me, um, it's worth it for me to carry a bigger camera. It's worth it for me to carry a bigger lens and a better mic because not just to make videos for you guys, but it's something I really enjoy doing. I love shooting quality video. I love being able to sit down and edit that on a full edit software and kind of relive that trip. Re, you know, revisit all of those places that I filmed and that I was at. So that's a part of, that's a part of it for me. That's what I really love to do is getting to sit down and look at that. So um, I could do it. I might do it on some shorter trips, but honestly, if I'm going on a shorter trip and I'm carrying less food and less gear and lighter gear, like, you know, like this Uber light, I'm going to carry heavier camera equipment. I'm going to carry a big 70 to 200 millimeter lens, a telephoto lens so I can get better photos. Because to me, it's just worth it. Um, that's what I enjoy doing when I'm out on the trail. Thank you so much for the super chat, Glenn. All right, um, another piece of gear that I've recently picked up and I will segue this into the last kind of main question that I've gotten. And that is, I'm gonna finally, folks, I'm gonna finally, 
It's been a long time since I've had one, but I'm gonna finally start using one on the trail again. Probably not around here because there's a lot of fire bans, but an alcohol stove. Um, I recently picked up, it's the, uh, the Evernew, the Evernew titanium alcohol stove with the little Evernew wings. So here's the actual stove itself with the wings. And I also picked up a Vargo fuel bottle to use denatured alcohol. And the reason that I picked this up is not necessarily to hike here in Arizona, because honestly, right now, I probably wouldn't take this out because there is, it's super dry. There's massive fires right now in Arizona, and I don't want to risk that with something that I can't turn off. But the reason I picked this up is because I am planning a trip, a bike packing trip for two weeks this coming winter in South America, possibly Peru. So myself and uh, two guys here at Outdoor Evolution, so me and basically the Outdoor Evolution crew is planning to go down to South America for two weeks for a bike packing trip, possibly in December, maybe the end of November, December, we'll see because our winter is more like their spring, their summer. So that is in the plans right now. So I am testing out an alcohol stove. I really want to see how this boils compared to my BRS stove, my light max stove, a jet boil. So I'll probably put out a video kind of testing all the different, um, flame capacities and how long it takes to boil two cups of water. But I want to take this down to South America because just in case I get into some place in a small village or something and I can't get an ISO can, this seems like a better bet to me because I can always use heat or something else to burn. So that is a new piece of gear that I want to test out. I uh, got another super chat from Chica and Sunsets. Well, howdy folks. Um, says, hi Darwin, is there more is there more length in the Aeon or the Altiplex Sunsets wants to know? Um, I personally think there's more length in the Altiplex um, than the Aeon. So I still have both of those tents. I still kind of use them periodically. Right now, a buddy of mine's using my Aeon and I'm um, probably gonna end up getting rid of it to him. But for me, the Altiplex definitely has more length as far as internal, especially if you're on something like a three inch pad like one of the Thermarest uh, Neopads. And um, if you're using something like a 20 degree quilt, I found that the Altiplex has more, it's not that it's longer, it's that the walls are not as steep, or they are steeper. Yeah, they're steeper. So they come out from the head and the foot in much more and gives you more room. So hope that helps. Thank you for the super chat, guys. I appreciate it. All right, another super chat from Andrew Wagner is sailing the new hiking. <laughs> Shout out to Dodo Jones for getting me into your stuff. Um, I don't know if sailing is the new hiking. I've never been sailing. I don't plan on doing any sailing. So as far as I'm concerned, no, but maybe for somebody it is. Um, yeah, I don't know. I've never sailed. I don't really plan on sailing. So, and uh, yeah, thanks Dodo Jones for getting him into my stuff. I appreciate it. Thank you, Andrew. I appreciate it, man. Um, and then Patrick um, Schwinghammer. <laughs> um, a super chat. Darwin, my 17-year-old daughter, took my phone and replaced and repeated asking about plug it in. Thanks for the info and your inspiration. That explains it. <sighs> Those daughters. Um, yeah, no problem, no problem, bud. Hopefully that'll help you, but if anybody that's not following my buddy, plug it in over on Instagram or YouTube, definitely go check his stuff out. He's a really great dude. Um, he's who I stayed with when I had to get off the AT early, and I plan on doing a bunch of hiking with him coming up in the not too distant future. Um, so I'm hoping that I can get back on the trail with him. So thanks, Patrick, I appreciate it. All right, um, that takes care of all the gear, but I did wanna, you know, well, I guess I talked about bike packing in South America. I talked about the Colorado Trail. I talked about the new gear that I'm currently using. I talked about the next hikes that I have coming up. So I guess that kind of took care of the title of the video and the main questions that I've been getting a bunch of lately. The other piece of gear that I recently got, if you guys are interested, is a, a pair, a new pair of Luna uh, Monos. So I, um, I've been using these for years. I actually have an old pair on right now. When I'm not hiking, for anybody that wants to know, and I guess I've never really talked about this uh, in a video before, but when I'm not hiking, I don't wear hiking shoes. I wear a minimal sandal. Uh, this is the Luna Mono. This is the original version, super flat, super wore out. I've had this since like 2000, 
18. I have done a little bit of hiking in these, but not a lot. And I recently replaced them with the new version that has the little wing on it. The only reason I'm showing this is I do carry these on bike packing trips. So when I was doing the uh, Blue Ridge Parkway in 2018, I did carry these. So I had my cycling shoes that I ride in that clip to my pedals. And when I'm not riding, I wear these around. Um, if it's real cold or something, I just wear socks and do the kind of old man toe sock thing. And uh, yeah, they're super light. They have a Vibram bottom and I dig them quite a bit. So if you're looking for some good minimal shoes uh, or sandals to not, to get your feet out of your hiking shoes all day, um, these are pretty great. I still don't carry camp shoes if I'm going out backpacking or doing um, through hiking or whatever. I don't carry a camp shoe, uh, but these would be a good, this would be a good camp shoe if you are a camp shoe person. So a little plug for Luna, uh, not sponsored or anything. They didn't give these to me. I bought these on Moose Jaw, uh, but awesome sandal. I've been using them for years. All right. So now that we got all that out of the way, let's see if I have any questions over in the chat box. So if you have a question, oh, and if you have a question for me, throw it over in the chat box. I got about, mm, we'll say 15 to 20 more minutes. Unless I get on a tangent with a really good question, I'm gonna go for another 15 to 20 minutes. So if you have a good question for me, wing it over here. Um, Brad Wire says, not sure if this has been asked before, but do you take a backup pair of glasses on your long hikes? People ask me this all the time, and no, I sure don't. Um, I have my regular pair of glasses and then I have a pair of prescription sunglasses, but I don't take any type of backup glasses. I don't take any type of anti-fogger uh, lens wipes. My lenses just get dirty, then I usually take my shirt or something. I wipe them off and that is about it. Adam says, favorite beer? Uh, my favorite beer is usually whatever I'm around. So I'm a local beer drinker, totally. Uh, since I'm in Flagstaff, my favorite brewery in Flagstaff is Historic Brewing Company. And my favorite beer by them is probably the Pie Hole Porter. I like to drink local beer wherever I'm at. Um, I don't know why, it's just kind of important to me to kind of support local breweries. Uh, so yeah, my favorite beer is usually whatever is local to where I'm at. Brett Knoll says, what editing software are you using? I use Final Cut Pro. Final Cut Pro is what I use and what has been crashing on me lately. Uh, recently, Mac did a, an OS update, um, iOS, iOS, OS, I'm terrible with technology. Mac did a new update and I updated before I started editing that new video and all of a sudden my Final Cut doesn't work right. It keeps crashing on me. There's no update for Final Cut, so I don't really know what the hell is going on with that but that's what I usually edit. That's what I edited the film on. So Through the Great Southwest was edited on Final Cut. It's what I do all of my YouTube videos on. And when I'm on trail, if I'm gonna edit a video, I typically use LumaFusion, which is a great mobile editing software. It's probably what I'll take with me to South America in December on a small iPad mini. So I'll have a completely different media setup when I go to do that trip. Uh, you guys will see, I'll end up doing a bunch of different bike packing trip videos this year. I know I said that last year, but it was a really short year for me as far as the bike packing season goes. Um, so I do plan on doing more bike packing media. And with that, I'll also show what I will be bringing electronic wise. Let's see. Oh yeah, somebody said zero sandals are honestly so amazing. I've had mine for three years. Yeah, zero sandals are great too. Luna sandals were kind of my first minimal strap sandal, so that's just kind of what I go with. Uh, but I hear a lot of good things about Zero. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's an interesting question. Um, what's your motivation to get you through a through hike? Uh, to finish? <laughs> Um, I'm a pretty competitive person, so if I kind of set my mind to doing a long distance hike, uh, I'll do anything that I can to finish. So, uh, yeah, I guess that's my motivation. Aside from that, you know, being out there and like I said, carrying a bigger camera with bigger lenses and mics and stuff like that, I love creating media. I love creating video, especially film. Over the last handful of years, I've really kind of tapped into my insanely creative side 
with video. So for me, you know, the through hike's amazing, but just being out there to capture it and then share it with other people, that is one of my personal favorite things about a through hike and probably something that keeps me going, honestly. Ooh. Starting to dry up, folks. Nearing an hour. All right. Ryan says, ooh, there's a good question. Will you ever get back into Osprey packs? Probably not. Um, a little overkill. Maybe if Osprey came out with some sort of minimal pack or something uh, that was frameless, it was 35 liters, maybe I might check it out. But yeah, I mean, they're great packs. They're awesome for people that are carrying heavier loads, need more support, need a fully padded hip belt. Excellent packs that are available everywhere. I personally like supporting cottage companies. That's why I use a lot of the gear that I use. You know, I love this pad. But if there was a cottage company right now that was making a sleeping pad that was great, that was just as comfortable as this, I'd probably use the cottage company uh, pad over this one just because I like supporting hiker owned companies. So um, probably not on the Osprey stuff. Uh, somebody said, what is your favorite Muddy Waters album? That's a good question. <laughs> awesome question too. I love Muddy Waters. Um, so I actually used to own a blues bar. That is what I owned for years. Um, I owned a restaurant that was also a blues bar. It was called Talk of the Town Brick Oven Pizza and the Blues. Personally, I'm a bigger Howlin' Wolf fan and Albert King fan. Um, I don't know if I could really list a Muddy Waters album. Um, I mean, Muddy's great, all of his stuff's great, but awesome question. Not one that most people would typically ask me. Thank you. Uh, favorite trail town on the AT. I'm pretty sure I made a video about that a long time ago. Favorite trail town on the AT would probably be Damascus. I mean, that's kind of everybody's favorite trail town, is it not? Uh, Damascus is just like, it is the pure, real hiker town, right? Like that town is totally there because of hikers. Um, obviously it's not there because of hikers, but at this point it's been around so long and it's made such a name for itself because of hikers. The restaurants, the hostels, the gear stores, everything is kind of catered towards hikers. So I would say, I'd say Damascus. Mm, how do you cut? Ooh, James Ritchie said, how do you cut back on calories after you finish a through hike? So I don't really cut back on calories so much. Um, I am actually an intermittent faster. So since I got off the PCT in 2018, I intermittent fast every single day. So I will typically not eat past 9 p.m. Sometimes I'll take it till 10 if it's like a late night or something. And then I won't eat until the next day until about 3 or 4 p.m. So I intermittent fast that entire time. And then when I eat, I basically try to eat as many calories as I can. Obviously, I try to stay within that 2,000 calorie mark. Sometimes it's way over, depending on what I'm eating. But that's typically how I keep from overeating, is I'm just an intermittent faster. It gives me more energy, makes me feel more lean, uh, lets my brain work a little bit better when I'm editing video and stuff. So, yep, that's how I manage. Let's see. Um, ooh, Color Up says, how much does your weight fluctuate during a through hike? You know, it used to fluctuate quite a bit. I think when I went out to do the AT in 2015, I was out there for 1,600 miles, and I want to say that I lost about 15 pounds. Um, now when I go out, I don't really fluctuate that much. I, because of my diet, how I eat on trail, I intake a lot of fats and protein. I kind of got away from the whole sugar thing and high carbs. My weight pretty much stays the same. I think on the PCT, I started a little heavier because I wanted to, I wanted a little meat on the bones because I was trying to go out and hike fast and do big miles. Um, I want to say I probably ended up maybe total, total maybe losing close to 10 pounds, under 10 pounds though, not that much. I don't fluctuate that much, honestly. Uh... David said, Levity 45. Yeah, it's an Osprey pack that's light. Uh, no, it's still overkill. I use a 35 liter pack and that is more than enough for what I do. If I wanna use a bigger pack, I typically use a 40 liter, plus I don't like the frame. And the last time I looked at the Levity, it kinda looks like it's made out of paper, like craft paper. So I don't know how durable that material is. I know some people that have used it and haven't really liked it, so. 
Um, somebody asked about, where's it at? I lost it. Tin Man said smokestack lightning. Oh yeah. Can't you hear me howling? Um, oh, James says, any content coming from you and Jupiter Hikes? Saw you two on Instagram, I think. Yeah. So Jupiter is pretty close to Flagstaff right now. He's not in Flagstaff, but he's pretty close. Uh, we got together a couple weekends ago and went, did a hike. Yeah, we'll probably get together and do some more hiking. I don't know about content. We'll probably get him to come on some trips. I think we kind of talked about maybe doing a little bit, but we'll see. Uh, I'm not holding him to it, and I'm sure he's not holding me to it, but we will see what happens. Uh, great dude, really fun to hike with. Had a really good time with him a couple weeks ago, so hopefully I can get out and do some more hiking with him here soon. Um, Mike says, what do you think of the knock trekking poles? I love my knock trekking pole. I've went through about five of them. So I actually prototyped them. I did a bunch of test poles and I had some of them that kind of separated at the joints because they didn't have the glue right yet to kind of glue the carbon to the plastic, uh, cam. Um, and now the last one that I've had, I've been really happy with it. I put a ton of miles on it, had it on the AT, I've had it in the desert. I just had it in clear Creek Canyon submerged in water like for three days and it's been great. It's long enough to set up my Altiplex. It's light. It is cottage made and yeah, I dig it. I hope that they get that out soon. I was really happy to, uh, to finally buy one. So, um, somebody said, what is a cottage company? Good question. A cottage company is a small family owned company, typically based out of someone's house or garage or maybe a small building that is still owned and ran by the person who started the company and the person that still makes the gear. So uh, Light AF, the guy who makes these, still makes these. He's still the guy who sews these. He's got some people, he obviously has employees, but he still sits down and makes these. Um, Waymark, uh, Mark Benson still makes packs. He's still the guy who made my pack. You know, the pack that I bought, the pack that I designed, Mark made that pack. Um, so that's what a cottage company is. It is a smaller company that is owned and in the hiking world, typically owned and ran by hikers. So, yep, that's what a cottage company is. That's what I like to support. Um, all right, guys, I'm going to answer just a couple more questions. <laughs> I'm not going to answer that. <laughs> um, Somebody just keeps saying, please answer me, but I don't know what you're asking. This moves fast. Ooh, Kimberly G. Hey, Kimberly. Kimberly always leaves super nice comments on my videos. Uh, thanks for all your support over the years, Kimberly. I really appreciate it. Kimberly says, do you speak any other languages? I don't, unfortunately. And I'm about to go to South America and I really, 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 really need to hone in on my Spanish. Um, I messed around a little bit with Spanish back in high school, but I've, wa I've like lost a lot of that knowledge. Um, I've forgotten how to say a lot of, put together a lot of those phrases and stuff, but it's something that I am working on. I actually just recently re-downloaded Duolingo and I plan on learning as much Spanish as I possibly can before I go to South America, because I think that's important. If you're gonna spend any length of an amount of time in a different country, I think it's important to somewhat know the language of the, com of the country that you're going to. Um, plus, I mean, what Spanish is like, it's kind of become our national language at this point, right? Um, so yeah, so I will be learning some more Spanish. Uh, thanks again. Uh, somebody said, Albert King is great. You are correct. Albert King is great. Somebody said, is ultralight and minimalist emerging as the new driving force in the hiking industry? No, I don't think so. Um, I think it is, it's always kind of drove the cottage companies because cottage companies, like I said, are typically owned by, in the hiking community, typically owned by long distance hikers, right? Or, or backpackers or hikers themselves. So their key audience is the long distance hiking community because it started with somebody just making gear for their friends. It was a guy that was making gear for their friends 
and then it kind of blew into something bigger and they started making more gear for more people. So I think that it kind of drives, I think the, the cottage industry is probably pretty driven by the minimalist and ultralight backpacking community, but the bigger guys, the weekend companies, Osprey, Big Agnes, uh, Thermarest, all of those companies, um, yeah, I think that they're still making kind of gear for everybody, right? Because you know, not everybody needs to go ultra light. Not everybody needs to go minimalist. Some people need a bigger pack. Some people need a bigger tent. So, and there's nothing wrong with that. So, no, I hope they don't. I hope those big companies don't start driving the industry towards ultra light and minimalist hiking. Because I think that there's so many great companies making so much great gear, and there's so many different types of gear that need to be made for different types of hikers. So, hopefully not. Um, All right, guys, I'm kind of tuckering out here. Ooh, somebody said returning to New Mexico anytime soon. Yes, I actually plan on doing some stuff in New Mexico in the fall, uh, September, October. So if anybody didn't hear the news, I've kind of said it in one of my last videos, I'm going to be starting to shoot, I'm going to start production on another documentary film at the end of this year, probably... October. First week of October is when I'll start production, and it's going to be a documentary about public lands. So wilderness areas, national parks, national forest, national scenic trails, um, so on and so forth. And I want to start production in New Mexico because there's a certain place that I really want to feature in the documentary and a certain person that I really want to interview for the documentary. I'm not going to give away any spoilers, but I do plan on spending some time in New Mexico in October. So yes, I am going back to New Mexico. Uh, somebody said, how much do you weigh? Uh, strange question. Are you sizing me up? I weigh, I typically weigh about 175 is what I kind of set at. Sometimes I'm a little lighter, sometimes I'm a little heavier depending on the season, but typically 175. Oh, got a super chat from Mike Chan it says, love your videos. Keep up the great work. Thanks, Mike. I appreciate you. Mm. And I think that I'm going to start wrapping this up. Um, <laughs> somebody said, wondering if you if YouTube will block a how to use a hiking bidet video. Probably. I'm probably not going to make that video. I'm still really trying to get comfortable with using one. So if anybody that doesn't know, I recently picked up a hiking bidet and I've started using that on the trail because I really want to lessen my impact on the trail um, as much as I possibly can. Plus, I don't want to carry toilet paper. It's, you know, it's either bury toilet paper, which I don't want to do, or pack it out, which I don't want to do. So using something like a hiking bidet, a little bitty bidet that kind of plugs into your water bottle um, is something that I've recently picked up and that I'm trying to transition into. So. Uh, but I'm probably not going to make a video on it because gross. <laughs> and guys, everything else kind of seems like questions that everybody else has asked me before or things that are just kind of on repeat. Somebody said, thanks for the live chat. Glad I caught it. Yeah, I'm glad you caught it too. I'm glad that everybody could sit here and hang out with me on a Friday night. Um, I mean, I apologize for wasting all your guys' time. I'm sure you guys could be out doing something really amazing on a Friday night and you chose to sit here with me and chat instead and I really appreciate it. Um, somebody said splash back. <laughs> no, there's a way that you angle the bottle and the stream. Just get one and try it for yourself. I'm not going to explain it, but no, I don't get any splash back. <laughs> uh, oh, Somebody said, hoping you can make it to North Carolina for the premiere of your next documentary. Sorry we missed you a few months ago. I would really love to reschedule that with Blue Blaze Brewing. I am thinking about coming out to North Carolina in mid-October, so I might try to reschedule the showing of Through the Great Southwest and a live Q&A and do all of that because I'd still really love to come out and be a part of that for those folks and help raise a little bit more money for the Arizona Trail Association. So um, keep an eye out. I might be rescheduling that. They've reached out to me. We just haven't really been able to put anything together yet because all those plans kind of passed and I'm kind of at a different 
point of my year now to where I kind of have to reschedule some stuff, like coming out to North Carolina. It was easier when I was out on the AT, but now that I'm back in Arizona, a little bit harder to get to Charlotte. So, oh, and a quick super chat from Ken. Oh, no question. Thanks, Ken. I appreciate you. Thank you so much for the super chat. All right, guys, I am getting to one hour and 10 minutes, and that feels like quite a bit. Someone's asking about the Colorado Trail. I answered that early on in the video. If you want, you can kind of skip back and watch that. Or whenever this is over, it will be uploaded to the channel just like a regular video, and you can re-watch it to hear what my plans are with the Colorado Trail because I talked about it in pretty in-depth. So, guys, thank you so much for joining me on this Friday night. Thanks for all your questions. I hope I knocked out some of the questions that a lot of you guys have had for me. Next week on Thursday, I promise, I promise, I promise, I promise that I will have that West Clear Creek Wilderness video for you guys. And hopefully you guys will dig it. I'm pretty proud of it. I think it's a pretty beautiful place and I've shot some pretty good footage. Oh, got a last minute super chat. You guys are just gonna keep me on here. That's the problem. Have you ever been, Clockwork Chaos says, have you ever been unable to find your bear bag slash canister the following morning? Would appreciate it if you could give a shout out to my son, Elias. Um, hey, Elias, how's it going? Um, and no, I've never really had a problem finding it. Uh, no, thinking about it, whether it was a bear bag that was hung up in a tree or a can that was next to a tree, I have not, I don't think I've ever lost one. If I, if I have, I don't remember. <laughs> but no, I don't think so. I usually know exactly where I put it. All right, guys. Again, thank you so much. Hopefully you're all doing well. Hopefully you're all getting out. Get out this weekend, go do something. Even if it's a quick uh, day hike, even if it's getting out in your backyard and testing a new piece of gear, like a new tent or something. Again, if you entered the giveaway and you haven't heard that I announced the winners for the sleeping pad, the tent and the pack, go over and check out the community tab. If you're not getting notified for that, go hit the little bell next to the subscribe button and that'll let you be notified whenever I post things like this or the giveaway or something like that. Aside from that, I love you guys. Take care of each other. Be well. Get out on the trail. And I will talk to you later. See ya.